Okay guys, so what we're doing today is shooting this house right there. There we go. And that's a one story house. So I've got the Canon EOS RP here that I'm using. I've got my EFS lens, the 10 to 18, which is great. This is a full frame camera, but it's a, an APS-C sensor. And I've got the adapter, the JJC mount adapter, EF to RF. So you can pick that up in the description below. And I'm still able to use my 10 to 18. You lose about half your pixels. This is a 24 megapixel camera. Canon does make an RF 16 millimeter, but I've already got this one. I think it's $299. It's in the description below. You can purchase in the description below. So whether you've got any sort of APS-C Canon camera or a full frame, you can get the adapter and use this lens, and it's a lot less expensive than the RF lenses. So we'll see how that goes, guys. Let's go take a shot of this house. Okay, now we're ready. Okay, so I'm shooting at uh, ISO 200, and I'm going to go to F9, which is always a nice place to be in the middle of the aperture range. And I'm going to go F320, or 1 320th of a second there. Okay, that should work here. I want to get at least some sun on the front of the house. Even though the tree's blocking a lot of it. There we go, 3 20th of a second. Very nice. F9, here comes some shade, the sun went in, so we got no sun on there. That's kind of nice, actually. That way we've got no major shadows. Let me get a nice shot over here. Always want to get the mailbox in there. So now I have to go down to about 1 60th of a second because the sun just left us. Okay, so we're going to get the mailbox in here with it. I always like to get the mailbox in the shot. Okay. You want to get a lot of different angles of the house. You can't get too many. Always best to have a variety. So you have options. Okay. So we're just making our rounds. Try not to step in that. Just making our rounds. I typically do the outside first because I know what the setting, I know the sun is where I want it to be. Although, boy, this is very contrasty right here. So I may come back out later and shoot this again. There we go. I'm gonna have to go to 180th of a second F9 on this. I'll have to adjust some of that in Lightroom. Let's see here, okay. Very nice. We get our barn back there, show all the features. You always want to go back to the back of the property as far back as possible. All right. And there we go. Not much here because of course the trees and everything, but that's kind of what you're shooting. So I don't see any dog crap. So that means we probably do not have an animal in the house. So it's not going to smell. That is a concern with real estate photography. You, you have a bad sense of strong sense of smell. Trust me, they don't always clean these up properly. All right. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so I don't know if we can get around this side. Oh, yeah, okay. So since we can, we'll do a shot here. We'll do a shot here. To show the patio. Okay, we've completed our outside shooting. Okay, usually you might have a lockbox on here. Boom, and there's our key. Okay, nobody usually joins me. Okay, come on in. There we go. Now, first thing we gotta do as we enter this dark, dark house is open every window and turn on every light. So let's see. Usually I request they do this before I get here, but this, as you can see, is already an empty house, so which I prefer because it does not smell like a dog. You don't have people wandering around asking you questions, ooh, making comments, trying to point out things they want shot because you already know what's supposed to be shot, but they always act like they want to tell you. Hey, garbage disposal works. It's the worst part because you got to open everything, turn everything on. I like to even turn the uh, lights on here. Where's Heat on, off, vent, light, boom. Three levels, boom. Okay. 
Okay, so we got this. Any other lights? Okay, hope that one turns on because that's going to be a problem. There we go, at least it's got some light. Nothing worse than a dark house. Uh, oh, and that's, a, and we do have a dark house. Ah, there we go, that's nice. Okay, we got a hallway light. Yeah. Yep, good deal. Let's see. These lights. Uh, better be a light. Okay. Nothing worse than a dark room, but we can still make it work if we had to. Turn on your, again, any light possible. There we go. Don't want a dark room. All right, got our lights on in here. Don't need the fan. Nice clean house, that's always nice. Shouldn't have any problems selling this one. Now you got a lot of light in here, so there's a lot of contrast. That's gonna cause a bit of a problem, actually. So that's where you really gotta rely on your flash. So what we'll do here is we'll get a shot with the door open, then a shot with the door closed. Okay. So let's roll. Now we're ready to roll. Okay. I really hope this is recording. So why don't you hop over that way? I'm going to get a shot of the door here. So this is one reason I like the Canon EOS RP because it has the flippy screen so I can see what I'm doing here. And there we go. Get it. Frame it up there. Point that up here. Here's the key. You might go hop over there. I typically will point it straight up at the ceiling. We turn her on. And right now I'm at uh, full power, which I probably don't need to be, but step back just a hair for me. There we go. Now, if you'll come over here, if I point that down to that, I don't know if you can see that or not. You can see I'm, my level is there. And then you can, it's all black except the door because, whoops, because I have made this just for the door. So we'll go up a, or actually go down a little bit. I'm at 160th F9, do not need to be at F9. So we're gonna take this down to 5.6. Still at 160th, but I don't really need to be. And boom, there we go. Now I do wanna use my timer. So you go to my two second timer. There we go. We're taking our two second timer there. If you can see that. Yep, we got our two second timer. So now when I shoot, it's one, two, there we go. And we got our nice little shot there. Now I'll, I'll adjust that. We'll take a look at that again. And uh, then we'll, I don't know if you can see that, how well you can see that, but we'll, uh, we'll show you in Lightroom as well. So got a shot with the door open. Now let's get a shot with the door closed and now we'll get on our way. Now that I've kind of got my settings dialed into what I think will be good. Now we'll go ahead and just get a shot with the uh, door closed. There we go. Nice entryway shot. Now, Usually what you want to do is kind of, yeah, stay at the side of me because this thing's a wide angle, picks up a lot. So now we're wide angle. If you can look down there again, and of course my horizontal, I'm just a hair off. You can see the horizontal going green there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, anyway, so I'm just a hair off, but you can see again, the room's dark and the, uh, uh, but the windows, I've basically adjusted in camera for the windows. And that way when I shoot, it's adding light to the whole house. Whoops, let's get that again. It's adding light to the whole room. And again, I'll bring all that up in Lightroom, but you'll see as I show you on the screen here now, the windows, everything outside the windows is green. An amateur will have complete blown out windows. So you, you meter for the windows and then the flash will take care of the ambient light in the room. There we go, just like that. You don't have to do that every time. I'll show them on screen. Okay, so now you'll notice I'm going around the room here, all the way around the room. We want to get as much of the room as possible from different angles because I like to give them more than they need. Now these are coming out just a hair dark, so I, I don't need to be at 160th. I, can, I should go to 125th. I'm not sure what the sink is on this, but uh, we're okay here. Okay, so see what we get here. Boom. 
Yes, very nice. Okay, still need to go up a little bit. I don't need that. Yeah, I like that a little better. Not gonna hurt a thing. The noise that you may get with a higher ISO will mean absolutely nothing. I'm using a full frame camera, so I've got a lot of latitude for noise. All right, so now we just start pointing and shooting. Boom. Okay, now I'm gonna get this way. Appreciate my son, Justin, taking care of the videography for me. Been wanting to do a real estate video for a long time now to show how simple it is. And again, as you can see, it's just, I mean, you will have people tell you all kinds of ways to do this. It adds a little bit, just a little better. Okay, so now onto the kitchen. The kitchen, you really gotta pay attention to. That's what sells a house. So I always try to get his, let's see. Well, okay, I'm gonna go 5.6, 1 25th of a second. I've got my flash at full blast. Now let me go ahead and we wanna get some close-ups here of the stove. And people like to see what appliances they're getting. The flash is a little harsh here, I think, but these are not wedding portraits. These are just to sell a home. People glance at them and move on. If you give them decent quality, they're not going to pay too much attention to the detail. You just make the detail as nice as you can and move on. Let's see, that's probably going to be blown out because that's a very bright, there's a, no, not really. No, that turned out great. Okay. All right, let's continue on. Get another angle here. I always try to frame around the windows, as you'll see in this shot, to make sure we get the windows in there so people see. Now that one probably didn't, no, that one did not come out the way I wanted. There we go. It's always a nice upgrade if you're gonna move. You wanna upgrade your sink because, oop, too bright, because that's something people will walk through and notice right away. Okay, so what do we got around the corner here? You always make sure you don't miss any hidden rooms. Ah, here we go. Anytime they've got a really nice washer and dryer, you wanna make sure and highlight those. This is kind of a weird offset shot. Hey, that works perfect. There we go. That's what we only need one shot of that. Oh yeah, nice garage. Let's go ahead and get that. Usually they store stuff in garages, but case like this it's clean so you want to go ahead and get some shots of it now very important note you see the realtor sign there that can't be in the photo that is illegal to have that in the photo for the places that you list this so I will uh, end up blurring that out so that sh the realtor does not get in trouble there all righty so we're getting some good shots in here always nice if you can Highlight the garage. There we go. Wish our garage looked like this. Probably not in my lifetime though. As he gets that light there. Okay, this is just kind of separating the hall or the dining room area from the living room area. Let's see what, uh, that wasn't a very nice one. So again, a lot of times you'll have problem with the light. In this situation, I've got this pointed up, so it's, it's going up to the ceiling, but you see right here, if you tip up there a little bit, the way this is set up, the light's going to hit here. When I'm under here, it's going to hit and bounce, but up there, it's not going to get a lot of light. If I'm over here on this side of the ledge, then it would get all the light in here. So you have to look for your ledges and any overhang beams, they can block that light. And then you've got uneven light in the rooms from one room to the next. So you got to work with that. And typically, sometimes you can't do anything about it. You just have to deal with it in a light room. And that's why we have light room. All right. Again, you're not going for a Pulitzer Prize winning photo here on any of these. You're just going for representative photos of the house. That's your job. You're not thinking about Instagram or that sort of thing here. Let's see what we get. Some of these are just guesses and boom, right on the mark. Always love it. After you do it a while, you start figuring out where you kind of need to be, but every house is different. And honestly, as I said about the ceilings, the beams, all that can have a effect on how the light is thrown throughout the room. 
There we go, perfect. And as you look at this shot, you'll see, you can look out that window and see those bushes. As you start looking at real estate photos that other photographers have taken, first thing you wanna look at to find out if he knows what he's doing is look at the windows. If they're completely white and blown out, that means it was just a hack that was just using a cell phone or he's learning. Okay, here's another issue that you could have a problem with. Let's shoot this and you'll see that, hey, there's me. So we don't want that. So it's, uh, bathrooms are tricky because you can't get you in, but like I said, this flash is shooting up here. It's not gonna get in there technically, so that's kind of weird. Though there is another light there that should, there we go. And uh, so you gotta deal with that. So you gotta use more ambient light. But again, you can't have your flash going off in the mirror. You can Photoshop it out, but it's tricky. And that looks great. Well, not perfection, but Good enough that it looks like a nice bathroom and people will realize it is a nice bathroom. And that's all they're looking at, like four seconds. Oh, that's a nice bathroom. And they're moving on because they want to see the kitchen. Okay, so now let's get the, uh, whoops, sorry about that, hitting your lights. I turn the lights out as I go out of each room, or I try to. That, that reminds me that I've shot that room because once you get going, you can forget what you've been shooting. I'm going to go, okay, we'll keep these at... The ISO 400, I probably could have went down to 200, but oh, okay, very nice. It's another one, almost perfect. And there's really nothing exciting about a bathroom. So uh, you get one good shot and that's it. Especially, I mean, unless they have a uh, modified bathroom, unless they've done something, uh, added a new shower, have a really cool modern shower head or sink. But if it's a generic bathroom, you just get one shot and move on because they're not buying the house based on the bathroom. Unless it's, a, again, a modified bathroom. And, and that's perfect. And I am still at only one eighth power on that one. So now we got the shot that way. This bedroom, we only need two shots because it's such a small room. You encompass everything with just two shots. I'll go ahead and go up to quarter power on that. Just to give me something. There we go. Very nice. Loving it, loving it, loving it. All right, let's move on. Now we've got this bedroom. At least this is a nice clean house you can move into and feel like it's uh, not dirty. Be amazed at the houses that you can shoot that are just trash. Especially houses with renters still living in them because they're getting kicked out when the house gets sold so they're not eager to get it sold so they're not eager to clean up all the dog poop and everything else that's or dog stains or whatever on the carpet. Let's see. Perfect. Okay. Oh, well, dang it. Let me reshoot that because I should have. There's a light here. Oh, well, you know, use the switch and there you go. Okay. It's a fluorescent light, so I wasn't. Uh, okay. So let me reshoot this one since we've added more light. Anytime you add more light or you can have more light just makes the house look cleaner. The lighter that it is, the cleaner it looks. Although this is a very clean house. This one's not a problem, but some of them I've made look phenomenal that were just total crap. So we've completed the house. I think we're good to go. So what we'll do is that's pretty much going to finalize. So let me, uh, let me do kind of a quick uh, overview here. So what we've done is uh, we've, we've shot our house and uh, it's only a one story house, which is great. No basement, no attic, nothing like that. So it was a pretty easy house to shoot and um, made our way around, got everything shot we needed to shoot, went outside, did our thing out there. This is probably a hundred, $125 job here in Indiana. A little on the high side, but I'm not cheap. Been doing this a while. We've been here, I screwed up a little bit because one of the first ones of the seasons I've shot um, and we got the video going. Technically, it takes about 15 minutes for me to shoot a house like this. For a two-story house, it's not that much longer because upstairs is usually only the bedrooms and so you're usually good. If you've got a basement, it's usually wide open, so those are fine, just almost like shooting a garage. So technically, I've got about maybe, I would max 25, 30 minutes um, I shoot them within 15 minutes of my house. I don't go all over the city. So within an hour in general, I can be, I can leave my house, shoot this house and be back home. The editing process, it takes about maybe 30 minutes to an hour, but I take my time. 
uh, and make sure I, I do the job right, get all the shadows out of there. Uh, sometimes you got to bring up the dark rooms and things. So I'll go ahead and show you how I do some of that here in Lightroom and you can get an idea of how these are developed from, they're not all certainly coming out of camera. I do have to uh, edit these. So I'll do that and um, we will take a look at these and hopefully that was helpful. All you gotta do is uh, shoot your own house, go around, doesn't matter what it looks like because nobody's gonna see it, practice on your own house. The flash is the key and 50% of this is Lightroom, the way I do it. I don't have a bunch of flashes all over. I don't take all that time to set it up. I don't do half million dollar homes or million dollar homes. This will probably sell for a couple hundred thousand because the market's jacked up so high, 150 to 200,000, something like that. So it's not worth doing all of that staging and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is what we've got. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. Using the uh, GoPro 7 Black to film on, thanks to my son Justin, helped me out there. I've got, the, um, I've got the Rode Go 2 that I'm recording on and I just picked up a cheap, inexpensive lavalier mic. So I'm hoping, now there's gonna be an echo in here because it's an empty room, empty house. But in general, I'm hoping this, this works out well because I don't want the Rode Go tugging, dragging my shirt down like it has in other videos. So this should be okay. These were only about 20 some dollars, $30. I'll put it on the screen there. And you can get one in the links below. It came with two of these. So if you've got two folks, the Rode Go 2 has two, uh, has two transmitters. So you can plug one of these into each transmitter, put one on you, the interviewer, or two people that are being, and, and one on the other person, or two people that are being interviewed or having a conversation. And it all goes to one place. So very nice. So we'll see how this works out. Obviously, you've heard me this whole video, so we'll see how it goes. But links to all that in the description below. If you do purchase any of this stuff, I do get a couple cents off each purpose purchase or something. And literally, it's sometimes a couple cents, but that's fine. It shows activity, and that's what we want. So please like, please subscribe. More videos like this are coming. Hopefully, it was helpful. Again, we've got the Canon EOS RP. The flash I'm using, I should have pointed that out. The flash I'm using is a Sunpak DF4000U. It's a Sunpak DF4000U. And I can guarantee you that flash was no more than $60. Maybe $64, I don't know. I would not pay more than $100 for a flash. Just unnecessary for what I do. So get you a cheap flash, but a good flash. What I would do, and what I did was I bought two flashes. Um, because one did go out on me. It wasn't the sun pack, it was a different flash, but uh, that told me, taught me the lesson that you really, since they're so inexpensive, if you can get a $50, $60 flash, grab two of them and have extra batteries, always have extra batteries, and you're gonna be good to go. That way, if a flash goes out, throw it in the trash, grab the other one, put it on, you're good to go. You're making money, you're getting paid to do this, it justifies the expense. So, as opposed to a three or $400 flash, which, I, you know, May be necessary for you, but not for me. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. I do appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one.